We are on a mission. A mission to save and revitalize independent pharmacy. On the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast, you'll get actionable business advice. Hear stories from industry leaders. And share a laugh or two with us. Fuel your passion for pharmacy. One conversation at a time. Four. Three. Two. One. Ignition. Welcome to the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Key, president of Pioneer X, and today I'm here with my co-host, Marsha. Hi, I'm the director of marketing, Marsha Bivens. Today, our guest is Carrie Vanderhoeven and Serena Kalinske. Together, they are the owner and director of pharmacy at Duval Family Drugs in Duval, Washington. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Doing great. We actually got a bit of a cool weather last night. Uh, Woke up to 73 degrees. I don't think we've seen 73 degrees since May. So it's, it's crazy hot here today. It's probably 75 for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Nobody it's likes you. Not, probably 75. <laughs> Nobody out there likes right you, now. Seattle people, in your cool weather. I don't know. Who in, it. It'll be in the mid 90s today. Yeah. It's yesterday, miserable. So yesterday was 104 for us. And then we woke up to 76 this morning. Yeah. So no, it, it's kind of nuts. We, um, you know, the majority of houses out here don't actually have air conditioning. So that makes it a little challenging. Yes. I actually got to experience that for the first time going to Colorado um, with Jeff and his family. And um, Aunt Lisa's house doesn't have air conditioning. And so it's like you open up the windows at night and put these box fans to like suck in the cold air. And I'm like, yes. Well, it doesn't get very hot. And at night it gets down, even if it's 85 and at night or night it got down to 55. 55. And this was in July. Yeah. She's in, in Colorado. Eagle, Colorado. So that was super nice. But I am super excited to have you both on yeah, here. Yeah, hold on. I got to read this though. Um, today's podcast has been rated mature. Viewer discretion <laughs> is advised. Probably, probably, probably not that idea. <laughs> I went, uh, I took my daughter shopping yesterday and we went up to the outlet mall and a friend of mine from years ago was there. Um, a tiny tidbit about Carrie. I used to do Stampin' Up and Stamp- she was my upline in Stampin' Up. What is that? What? Yeah, what is that? It's a multi-level marketing, um, crafting kind of thing. I did huh. that when my children were, were babies and we ran into Jean, my upline and She's looking at my daughter, who's now 20, and she's like, your mother is so much fun. (laughs) I agree with that statement. (laughs) She's like, she's like, especially at convention. (laughs) I'm like, you know. Sheridan's like, I know. I, yes, I know. She goes. So it was kind of funny. My reputation precedes me. and, And Serena, your hair is blue. I'm used to the purple. It's a long story. It's yeah. a long oh, story. Let's, let's get into it. So I, well, the purple hair actually comes from convention. Um, a couple of years ago, one of the keynote speakers was talking and literally during the delivery of the keynote said, it's not like you would show up for an interview with purple hair. So I've made it my mission in life to show up with purple hair, to be like, I will have purple hair and you would hire me to kind of help break that mold. It's not that I have flaming purple hair, but I have, you know, purple in my hair. And so before uh, the last convention I went to that I was speaking at, what was the last one in Tennessee? Uh, You went to the Cardinal one, didn't you? Oh, yeah. RBC. So when I was going to RBC and I was speaking for NCPA, so I go to get my purple redone um, as I always do before I speak and my hairdresser bleaches it out and she goes in the back to, you know, puts my highlights in, goes in the back to get the purple and she comes out and she was like, we're out of purple. Um. And I was like, you're kidding me. (laughs) Like, and it's already has bleach in it and now we're out of purple. So that's why I have blue hair currently. So So it's not uh, really So go blue or go home. (laughs) See, yes. I was, you, you know, it matches your blouse. It's like, bam. It's like, hey, I planned this because I'm that cool. 
Now, yes. now you're not going far enough back, though, because when I hired your boss from Rite Aid 25 years ago, 22 years ago, and then he's like, I have this really rockin' tech I want to bring on. He's like, but she's a little rough and she's got like, you know, purple hair, pink hair. I don't know what color it was back then. So this isn't a new thing, honey. You've I've always. Yes. I'm like, so. So, yeah, it's and I'm like, I don't care. It's always been a thing. Yes. So that's how it I mean, that's how it started. I love she it. Ta- she has tattoos and she has colored hair. I'm like, OK. So that's and you it. would still hire me. I promise you would hire me with tattoos and colored hair. I still am a valuable asset. I've hired you three times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a story there. Yeah. How, how do you hire somebody three times? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's um, I mean, it's life, life changes and things. She came to me mm-hmm. from Rite Aid because um, I hired away their pharmacist in charge. Um, worked for me for several years. I don't even remember why you went back to Rite Aid that time. Was it, I don't, was it benefits? I think you didn't like one of the pharmacists that I had there for a while. Yeah, I was young and still had lots of attitude and life lessons. And, <laughs> you know, the grass is greener on the other side and I'm going to go somewhere and prove my worth somewhere else and kind of thing. Because so... That was after you had Ivy Sue. Mm-hmm. So you, because you were, you were always the lead tech up until Ivy Sue, and then you went out on maternity and did all of that. And when you came back, Jamie had taken the 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 lead tech position, and you were pissed. Mm-hmm. Maybe. So, so you would consider yourself spicy. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so I think this is, this is kind of birds of a feather flock together. I think you were just, you were just meandering to your destiny, right? Yes. Yeah, um, and- but, but before we get going strong, though, I got up this morning and I, I'm we're in here and, and I hear Marcy. <laughs> oh, that was, hey, I broke it. I broke it. Um, <laughs> so Gary lost me. Gary lost her streak on Duolingo. Me? Yeah. Yes. No, it said I did you, it late. It said you, you had zero. Way, you guys are on the way late. Um, we're on the way um, late. <laughs> you, see, you guys go to bed long before I do. And so I did it last night at like 1030 here. So, Which is no. midnight here. Oh, so maybe it just yeah. hasn't caught up. Yeah, maybe? no, I'm, I'm still at two, 293. Okay. Uh, okay. So you was like, Gary's the queen of Duolingo. Yeah. Yeah, no. No. And, man, I, I don't think I've used a, um, a streak freeze in six months, so... I haven't, I, like, my first week I got introduced to that, and I only used it once, but I haven't used it since, and I'm on my 52nd day streak. So you're trying to dominate in German. I am. So 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 tell me why, why German, and. So it it was funny, though. So I have a new kitten, and she's trying to, don't, don't worry, guys, it's fine. (laughs) Really. Are there earth Um, coins since you so I took I took German in high school. Um, uh, me and my 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 children's father both took German in high school. And my son is a well, he'll be a sophomore in high school this year. And so he chose last year um, to take German instead of his sister took French um, and uh, Jeffrey speaks Spanish. But Weston's like, uh-uh, I'm not going that route. So he decided to do German. And then it became clear that he was going to need some help. Gotcha. Yeah. So mom picked up the Duolingo and decided to learn alongside the son so that um, I could ensure that he was doing what he needed to do. Refresh my memory from high school and and all of that. So did he Um, use Duolingo to learn? I'm like, as I look at that, I'm like, if I'd had this during high school to learn the language, I think I would have been, that'd been great. So when my, um, so his high school teacher, when he was, you know, I mean, he's not struggling, but it was, you know, he's like, what more can I do? Where else can I go? They, they learn so different. They teach so different these days. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, for us, we'd have worksheets and we do the same things over and over again. And, and, you know, a lot of repetition and figuring these things out. These kids, you know, here's an online book, figure it out. It's like, Ugh. but the teacher did suggest that um, Duolingo would be a good um, adjunct to uh, the class. And so they did encourage them to do that. And so with that, and Jeffrey had used Duolingo um, for Spanish, too. So I'm like, okay, I'm in. I was told by an actual German. So um, 
There's one that works for my parents. Mm -hmm. Um, she's from Germany and she said that is a really, really hard language to learn. It and my sister in law, really my so sister in law is also you German and through 50 lessons, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm 300 days into German. So I'm in the higher tiers and actually getting through one lesson. Oh yeah. Is like, okay. It's all the tenses and all of the different conjugations yes. and, it, and the difference between formal and informal. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> like, you know, why I say all that crap? You know, the, what is it? I, I want bread, please. What is that? I want bread in Spanish. Yeah. Uh, necesito más pan. I want more bread. See, pan por favor, right? Or just point at it. Right. <laughs> I just, you know, in reality. And they're going to roll their eyes and they're going to call you a gringo. That's okay because that's what I am and that'd be better than me just saying bread. I'm, <laughs> we're headed to Spain in. In like less than a month. Yeah, less than a month. Yeah. I don't. Don't say that out loud. My husband would be super jealous. He, um, that's his bucket list is, is Spain. So, so cool thing about Duolingo is the gamification. Oh, right? I've and been she's been doing it way apart. more than, than me. I, I, I play with a little bit, but I've been, I've been watching her and, um, and I've even stopped and explained it. I'm like, it's really interesting because it's really cool. So it, it is. What's, what's neat though, is really driving her gamification works for Marsha yes. Bivens. Um, and, but my deal, I, I keep trying to figure out how to get more gamification in pharmacy, right? So, you know, as, as you guys, as you look at Duolingo and all the stuff you've done, you, you have any ideas for what, you, you know, how could we gamify pharmacy better? I think one thing that would be really helpful for us anyways would be having a training module that was like kind of live so that, um, or not a training, but like if we could take Pioneer and make it like take it out of actual, like, so we weren't actually like adjudicating claims and we weren't actually doing things, but having like, so that when we have like student, our student rotations come through or, um, you know, when we have new people coming in and we're training them, then we had, we could let, set them up on a computer and let them work through everything without actually being in workflow um, and making that kind of, you know, and I know like the contest Cody and I used to have was submitting e-care plans. We would time our e-care plans and see who could submit e-care plans the fastest. And we would literally like set a stopwatch and be like, all right, guys, who can do the fastest e-care plan? So that nice. was our game that we used to play. But I do think that if you had like, you know, if we were able to take Pioneer out of workflow so that we weren't doing real prescriptions, but setting up kind of a, a, a training or a test mod, you know, a test mm -hmm. way, then that would be a neat way to play with it. And mm -hmm. so then you could really, you know, do games through that learning games. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, and also like gamification on the patient side of things. So like with Duolingo, after you complete something, it goes, Hey, guess what? You you're 97% ahead of most people today because mm -hmm. you started earlier. And so throwing out maybe like fun facts like that, like, hey, because you took your medication today on time, you're actually, you just decreased your chances of going to the hospital this much, you know, give them a fact that scares them goes, oh, hey, I can't miss a day. Yeah, I just, my first, and I think both of those are interesting. I, I really was going kind of more the way Serena was. Did I say that right? Yes, yeah. you did. Awesome. Good job. Um, I know you practice. I have been practicing. <laughs> he has been, I've been making him practice and um, correcting him. Is the, you know, how could you make work more fun? You know, how could we have techs competing against other techs at other stores? You know, you'd have to normalize the, um, the, you know, some stores are busier than others, but I, but I, there was a way to make it more fun to help, to help people operationalize and, and help the people run. Uh, speaking though of the, the sandbox thing, we do that in our university products. So um, the Pioneer X, the, the university that the tech schools use and the pharmacy schools use, about half those in the country use ours. And they remote desktop into a deal that is a, a kind of a sandbox. And uh, I don't know if y'all know Erin Dalton, but- um, do. They she, know Erin. Oh, yeah. 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 She starts working for us in September. Uh, in, I think September 9th, the yeah, second week of 9th. September. And she will be uh, over that university program, but also have a goal of bringing those concepts into the pharmacy. Um, that actually has a workbook 
uh, and actually has exercises that you go in and do in the sandbox and remote in, hey, create this patient, do this blank, do this blank, do this blank. And um, the goal is for that to be our new modus for if you hire a new tech, um, they do the workbook and they do the test deal online and stuff like that. And so hopefully over time it can advance into more advanced stuff. Now it's not your data, right? It's a, it's a kind of a sandbox of them creating their own, but, um, should be, uh, should be super interesting. But yeah. I, I see complications with that when, with the, with in a workflow setting. So, um, where you have one person that does all of the calling and then you have the next person that's doing all of the data entry and without workflow, yeah, it'd be very easy to gamify it and go, cool. I called 10 patients a day. I completed this many care plans. I filled this many, I got this many MedSync patients going. And then it's like, cool. I outdid you because you only did four calls and I did 10. Yeah. Nanner, I think nanner, that, boo -boo. So, go ahead. I, I, yeah. I mean, I was thinking the same thing, you know, the, Every tech has their strength and what it is that they do, mm -hmm. you know, are assigned to do that day. But I think maybe as um, as a group and as the pharmacy, you know, even if there were, you know, some pop ups that, you know, you did, you know, you did, you know, 10 more calls this week than you did last week. But as a whole, not necessarily right. as this technician versus that technician or, you know, you're you know, you've hit this goal for this week. You've um, we could put we could put goals in there for things like signing up um, MedSync and, mm -hmm. you know, when, yeah. you yeah. know, when you enroll somebody in MedSync, you know, the system somebody tracks that, that and at a certain, say you put in a daily goal and at the end of, you know, once somebody puts in that last one, boom, something pops up on everybody's screen. Some, somebody actually did that did for a, a week in their pharmacy. Week? They did it. They did a competition for who can sign up the most people on MedSync. Mm -hmm. or text alerts. Yeah. I, I think I the signing up for MedSync, I think that's a good one. Um, I think we have a goal to kind of create um, a kind of a daily, I call them micro cycles, but a daily cycle count and inventory. Um, yeah, we need to do that. That might be fun as well. So mm -hmm. be who counted the most items this week. You know, basically, hey, I, it's slow. I can just say, go give me some stuff to count. And it kind of does the little... Um, even, even though if it's not tied to a single employee, you know, once that, you know, metric is hit for that day for the store, everybody knows it so that mm. everybody can celebrate the fact that, hey, guys, we did what we were supposed to do, um, you know. So you're working on team building, too, versus employee competition? There's both. I mean, there's pros and cons to both. Yeah. Yeah. And there's Sometimes not competitive really... against each other is fun. Yeah. Because yeah. there's not really... There's not really team building in Duolingo, although there was that chess thing that, that I signed you and Carrie and I up for. And it was like, hey, complete this many points and you get 30 minutes of double everything. So I was like, sweet. And last week, the. She liked you that day. <laughs> and there, last week was really freaking hard because. Um, it was, it was aim at this league for me. And I was like, it's my birthstone. I have to be number one. And there was a, a person give me a run for my money this Dude. week. It's, it's a lot more laid back. I'm in Pearl. So Dude, I hit, so I, I was striving go gamification for the, whatever it is that you get when you're number one in the diamond league. Yep. And thankfully that week was the week that I was on vacation up in Whistler and happened to have COVID. So <laughs> it was I real easy for you to hit diamond league. Yeah. I had, I had a lot of downtime. That's um, it. I just need to get COVID that week. Right. Shut Reasons to be thankful to be on vacation and have COVID. Yeah. So that you can, <laughs> so you can hit Diamond League and Duolingo. That's pretty <laughs> pathetic. But I did. I hit it you know, in the car on the way home, like four hours straight of doing it. The next week, though, in Diamond League, somebody had like 12,000. You know, I'm like, dude, I don't have that kind of time, man. Oh, yeah. That's that's. What, what did you I end up with in Amethyst when you... It was 12,000 because the person below me was giving me a run for my money. And so I got 25, uh, 250 points ahead of them to mm -hmm. And they just kind of gave up on Saturday. And I was like, okay, I'm expecting this person to spend all Saturday on here to try to kick my butt. And yeah. so I got up at three that morning and I was like, I'm going to go work on the garage and I'm going to do Spanish while I do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I was in the car on Sunday that day. So I made sure I was far enough ahead. So. So the yeah. big, um, uh, we're through the big trade show push. Yes. Um, what, uh, what are we working on in the pharmacy now? What, what kind of, um, I'm sure y'all came home with goals and things to change and what, what, what's, uh, what's on our mind? 
so the pandemic has been really interesting for us. We were in the position that I picked up my second store right before the pandemic hit. And so we were just in the process. And so the second store that I picked up at the end of 2019 um, was on QS1 that was still on Windows 7. So December wow. 31st that year you know, we were, we were, we were dying. So, um, at the new store, and again, when you, when you purchase a new store, I mean, you don't test necessarily want to go in immediately and make huge sweeping changes. Um, there was some anxiety with some of the staff, but we had to, we had to make changes because of, of, you know, the, uh, the hardware issue. So we went live with Pioneer on January 6th, um, that year. And then of course, in February, COVID hit. And so we we were trying to get our feet on the ground, trying to figure out our um, our management style, who's who's in charge of what, how are things, you know, who's going to do what, so that we could effectively run the two stores. I put I put Serena here in charge of you know everything at the store that I had had for well 28 years, 27 years at that point, and you know I spent a good deal of my time at up north, um, but for the, you know, that two years, it was just fly by the seat of your pants. Um, and we did, and we did good things. I mean, we did a lot of monoclonal antibodies. We, we made a lot of changes. We did a lot of great things today at breakneck speeds break. Yes. No nice. question. Um, oh, wow. today we're finally <laughs> stepping back and saying, okay, what is our long-term plan here? Where are we going? What are we doing? Mm -hmm. Who's in charge of what, um, I'm working on getting a pharmacist in charge, in position at the second location so that I can finally step back and say, okay, what's, what's the big picture here? What are we doing? You know, and how are we going to do it? I have three, actually I have four. They're butts. <laughs> They're pain in the butts. <laughs> this cat is all over this right now. I'm going to have to put her upstairs if she doesn't behave. Um, we're, and, and then we're still trying to figure out what our new, you know, clinical goal is. We've, um, during the pandemic, I had a, um, I had a tenant in my Duval building who was a primary care physician and he was there for 14 years. Um, he closed his practice during the pandemic. Um, he was the one who signed all of our CDTAs and all of that. So we've lost, we've lost that ability at this point. And um, out here, it's really hard. Most of the, we don't, we have very few um, standalone physicians anymore. And in Washington state, we have great ability to do a lot of things as pharmacist providers, but it is all, it is all based on a CDTA model. So we have to have, you know, providers sign off on that and they all work now for big systems and the big systems won't allow them to sign CDTAs. So finding a primary care physician who's working on their own, who's willing to sign these things is kind of a challenge right now. Um, Interesting. I think we're, it's time to get back into the community. Yeah. And so um, working on, on finding somebody who can do that, we, you know, we're poised to get into things like, um, you know, test and treat, strep and flu. Heck, we were poised to do that before the pandemic hit. We just were still getting to the point. We were, we were just finalizing our CDTAs. Mm -hmm. um, and the guy, the physician who was going to sign off on those ones um, was in charge of the monoclonal antibody rollout for the whole state. So he disappeared. And so we're, we're back at square one trying to figure out what our best way is to go with that right now. Um, we have a, uh, so with him closing his practice, um, we have a full medical facility in my building right outside my front door. Nice. Um, which was really helpful for the monoclonals. Serena and I ran our monoclonal um, clinic out of there. We had four exam rooms, four separate exam rooms wow. with a lab. I mean, the full, the full everything. So um, it was super efficient for us. I mean, we were able to hit the ground running really early in that process. Um, so we're trying to weigh what might be our next step with that place. I mean, I could, you know, try and find somebody to take it, but it's like, maybe I want it. You have to have a doctor, not a PA to a sign PA up? A PA can't do it. Um, an ARNP can. Okay. Um, not a PA. Hmm. Um, so have you so, thought about hiring one of those yourself? Um, haven't looked seriously into it. I have some friends that are nature paths and those sorts of things at this point. Um, looking at the legality of, of all of that and, you know, who can supervise what. Yep. Um, 
gets to be the tricky part. Um, I wanted to go to um, NCPA and, and investigate some of that, you know, embedded off um, in the office stuff. Love to do the Amina thing. Um, it's challenging here, though. I mean, because again, we don't have standalone providers, and these systems right. have, and these, and our systems here are huge. They're not small systems, so they're not. You know, they have their own. Um, the pharmacists who are running different departments and, and these sorts of things there. So um, we're, we're we're trying to figure out what our next what our next big thing is. Um, you know, again, we can do the test to treat. Uh, uh, I'd like to. Again, we need to find we need to find that particular provider though that's gonna that's gonna help us with um, those CDTAs and stuff like that. So, Serena, will so. you be speaking at NCPA? Yes. Yeah, I have two sessions at NCPA. Okay. And what are the sessions? What are the topics? Uh, one of them is on team building. So building your dream team. And then um, I'm doing one on the showroom floor in regards to um, uh, it's off of Chantel, who works for NCPA, okay. did a session about bringing in, um, she brought presented all of her resources on how to utilize students in the pharmacy. Okay. And I attended her session and it was amazing. It was so good and it was so inspiring. And I was huh. like super inspired. Nice. And now we do student rotations in our pharmacy. And so they've asked me to come back and present how I used her materials to get it going in our pharmacy. Wow. Very cool. Huh. Yeah. I need to have her speak at Connect. Yeah, definitely for sure. I so, am that person that's like, give me a microphone and a bigger platform to stand on. <laughs> I, love, <laughs> I love speaking. I love sharing nice. what I know. And so it is definitely part of my Even passion. if the microphone is only at the drive-thru, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and you, get, you throw in like a lot of feedback and tips and Will gives you a lot of shout outs on um, like. Uh, yeah, Will's a fan. Yes. For sure. Will, Will is a, Will. Is a yes. Serena fan. I and love Will. He's a great guy. He's fun, too. And I, I enjoy I'm always telling him, though, I was like, when I when he did his presentation at Pioneer, and I was like, Will, you didn't teach me nothing I didn't already know. He was like, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I would I would love to, um, you know, any ideas you have for Connect for next year. Yes. You know, we're yes. uh, we continue to kind of restructure that and, and try to take feedback and would, would love to hear those. Yep. And, and the I told classes him, are, are constantly changing. Yeah. Um, but I told him I want to try to do some black belt, even realizing that I'll have less people, you know, like um, report scripting, you know, some of the really uh, hard, the analysis tab with the um, inventory. I mean, a really deep dive into yeah, some inventory of the management deep, and ordering. And actually flag them black belt and say, hey, don't come to this classroom unless you have these kind of deal. I think that would be great because that was one of the things that was frustrating was sitting in a room next to somebody that was having their mind blown right. at the same time that I was like, man, I didn't get a chance to learn anything. And yeah. so I know you guys are having to appeal to a huge audience. And so I think that would be neat if we were able to have some breakout sessions where yeah. you were like, hey, if you you know, if you need the basics, this is your class. And if yeah. you know the basics, then this is your class. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if there was, you know, a way to even like if we had like a lunch session, that's like this is during these, you know, this three hour block, we're going to have a breakout session. And mm -hmm. this is for the people that, you know, you attended this morning session and your mind was blown. You should probably Come not here. attend. Yep. We need desks. No. We need tables right. in front of us too. Yep. Um, yeah, the tables are hard because, and the reason the tables are hard and, and we continue to try to figure this out is there's a, and, and we even broke it. There's a maximum distance for the screen that you can see, uh, mm -hmm. because you're showing, uh, software on the screens. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking for an app to maybe pre download screenshots to like your phone or something like that to try to help where we could do that. Uh, I think, um, we're talking about doing instead of 50 minute classes, doing an hour and a half. And having mm -hmm. 50 minutes of material and then 30 minutes of questions. So have a, a mic and have people line up and ask questions to get real feedback. Um, we're talking about on the Sunday having a thing called Connect at Connect where you tell us your interest, you like your top three interest, and we assign you to a round table. 
Mm -hmm. then you have a you have a a nice round table discussion with hey i'm doing this in my pharmacy but how are you yes right we would have a and try and help each other right we'd have a pack that tells you what to do here's here's what to do go around and ask each person this question Mm -hmm. and and kind of a facilitated um sharing Mm -hmm. So that was one of the things that I found at Connect was that I spent a lot of time teaching while I was at Connect was I would be sitting there and I would end up, you know, of course, talking because that's just what I do is talk to random people. And I would end up actually teaching tons of stuff that I knew like, oh, well, this is how I do it or this is what we do in Duval. This is, you know, going about. And of course, it's hard I don't have my, you know, I didn't bring any of my SOPs or any of that kind of stuff. And so trying to explain how we're doing it. So it would be interesting, like for those of us that remote into our systems, if there was a way to actually, you know, have that kind of facility, like if we could remote into our system and be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. If there was a way, I know we get into HIPAA compliance issues with that, but even if we were using French fry as a demonstration, like if everybody was working off of French fry. Well, if you guys have the sandbox for school, I mean, honestly, one of the hardest things is, I mean, you know, the, the screenshots, you're correct. They're really kind of hard to see for those of us that have, you know, any sort of, especially, you know, vision challenges um, and, actually, you know, figuring out what's, you know, tabs and stuff like that. If we could, if we could, you know, have a, you know, again, the tables in front of us, everybody brings their laptop and, you know, give us a, um, you know, access to um, your sandbox and, and do some, some live demonstrations where we can actually work our way through it. I mean, eons ago when I was um, QS1, um, you know, we would go to, convention and you know every room was set up like a lab yeah. and you mm-hmm. know we all had our, our our terminals and stuff like that and god knows we don't need to do that um but everybody has a laptop anymore um and mm-hmm. so if if you know access to the sandbox during that would be yeah um, and you'd yeah. almost have to think that's a smaller you know you start running limitations there of bandwidth at the hotel oh, yeah um, True. right you know well, you just they're just not yeah. designed for that I would be interested even, and I don't know, I think I may have been talking to Will about doing, I had heard sometimes you guys do like a weekend. Yeah, yeah you're we, doing we the, tried to do the weekend the with Pioneers. Um, yeah, what weekend with Pioneer X where we rent a movie theater um, because you have the really giant jumbo screen and that makes it really easy for people to fly in for a quick weekend and then do Saturday morning that afternoon play around in the area and then also a Sunday morning that afternoon play. So um, we are revisiting that for yeah, I the think first couple of ones we tried. We had horrible weather. Mother events Nature in the said country. no. Mother Nature said no like three times, and we were like, okay, we yes. just need to back up, and we need well, it. Well, is that is that like the one you did in Montana in the winter? <laughs> yes. Well, and one and we then, did in and Dallas. Then Dallas had and, storms as and well. Then had a nice storm shut down uh, the airport, but but yeah, no, I, I think that's a good. And, and then the theater is a great venue for that. But but mm-hmm. I think that's more of an intimate. You know, figuring out what that intimacy is you go around. It's your big challenge. You know, Pioneer is super powerful, but helping people use it to right. its fullest. You know, you have so mm-hmm. much stuff that they're just not using or don't know how to use. And um, well, Right. Even myself, who, I mean, I, I feel like I'm uh, somewhat of a Pioneer expert, but I still feel like Pioneer is like our brains, right? We're only using 10% of what's out there, that there's so much more out there. So... With a weekend thing, if I was going to attend, I would want to know that what I'm attending is going to be a black belt event. Yeah. I don't want to attend to go play in the in the sandbox necessarily. I would want to know that I'm coming to learn the things that I don't already know. So it would mm-hmm. be really neat if you were like, if you had even like, okay, this weekend like maybe is going a to be first. questionnaire that was, you know, do you know how to do this? Do you right. know how to do this? Well, great. You should really stick to this class block. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I like the idea of doing some concentrated, you know, again, black belt sort of something. Um, inventory management would be one. Report writing would be one. I would love to see something for um, my front end staff um, to be able to do their inventory management, the retail inventory management and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, most of us, many of us Important have, you know, a robust front end. But 
they kind of just limp their way through everything that they're doing. I mean, and, and, you know, we're not any good at that sort of thing either. And I've never seen any focus on, you know, the point of sale side of that. So if I could send my front end manager to a, you know, a two day something somewhere where she can figure out how to import inventory and, and, you know, handle all of that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I we need her. to try those. We need to try the targeted concepts again. Yeah. Like we were going to have a, we were a, do wet, a, a med sink weekend. We were going to do a med a compounding. sink. We were compounding. Do is, compounding is one that would be adva- could, mm-hmm. could definitely get advanced quick. Yep. So, sorry, I want to give Serena a huge shout out for like a tip and trick that I thought was so freaking cool. We added it to the Orbit one time and that was the um, taking your Bitmoji and emailing it to yourself. And then adding that to the RX Local text chain. So whenever you text me in RX Local, then I know, oh, cool, it's Serena. And I walk in and there's the purple hair, although now it's blue. So right. <laughs> I thought that was like <laughs> the coolest. Again. Yeah. And I, th- I thought that was just the coolest tip ever. And I was like, we have to share this. We have to put it in the orbit. And it has to go out on like a, on like tips and tricks for this week. It's oh. so fun too. And the patients love it. Like they just think it's such, I mean, it's just a hoot. It's that, the it's patients that connectivity, get a that sticky that you're right. creating. Cause there's yeah. that familiarity of the, like, if, yeah, I talk to Serena all the time and I know who Serena is when I walk in, even though we've only talked on the phone and I haven't been in the store, but no, I love it. It was so awesome. And, um, you also created and shared with me the document and it was just, uh, I haven't gotten all the way through it yet. So I apologize, uh, where you created basically the how to training document for your pharmacy. Have you shared that out with any other pine? Oh Mm -hmm. yeah. She shared with lots of people. Yeah. Yeah, And that's a share with anybody that asks anybody who asks. And I think that's, uh, you know, the, the one shout out we certainly should say today is just how, how much both of you guys contribute to pharmacy as a whole. I'm a, I'm a strong believer that you um, that you being successful is just a, a a recipe of helping enough other people be successful. Uh, you you know you see that from you know certainly people like Amina and, and things like that. just you know and you guys are both big givers back and 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 I think that's going to continue to to help you be successful. Um, Carrie is on the the board of IPC. As well, hang the- on. I've got a bigger shout out for Carrie that I don't think she she deserves credit for that other people jumped up and took, even though it was really us and Carrie that accomplished. Mm-hmm. And it was that agreement that she read detail when we came to visit you and you were like, can you believe this? If I buy oh, more than about, the, a, care mark. Mm-hmm, about yeah. the care mark. And then you came in and added and went, great, we need to add an alert. And the next day, customers were calling because it became apparent they did not read their agreement. They signed it and went on with it. There was people calling in and complaining, why am I getting this stop? Why is this happening? And that right there, that conversation, that visit, that interaction made us put the trigger in Pioneer. It made a lot of angry pharmacists not just call us but call Caremark and jump up and down and complain and you even got a call from a senator yeah i got a call from senator anna and Caremark and Caremark yeah. that was a, a great example there of if enough people act at the same time mm-hmm. you can get almost anything done you know that it, is you know how do you how can you activate pharmacies you know you, you see a lot of calls out from ncpa to hey please do this blank and people yep. kind of here or there are, are everywhere but the, but the alert in the system really a activated a lot of people it a, created a mob and, and you want to try to think you know how could we use that in the future what um, are some other things that we can create a riot about that's going to help change pharmacy and that's that's been my biggest thing like uh we did the the um the Adele Carnegie training and we were asked you know what is one of the things that you look forward to in the future of Pioneer and I I am my answer was I look forward to how we get to contribute to the change of healthcare and I thought that was just awesome to get to see another example of what we've done to help change healthcare and help you guys be successful yeah what's going on with IPC these days tell us about the world of being a buying group uh, so, um, we're in, um, what is an exciting time right now? Unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave the NCPA conference early because our, um, fabulous CEO, um, Don Anderson has decided to retire, okay. um, after 13 years. So we are knee deep in a new CEO, um, search right now. So, um, 
halfway through NCPA, I have to fly out to um, our headquarters in Madison and we'll be interviewing the final candidates for that. So wow. we're knee deep in that. We've had um, a lot of a lot of stuff in the last couple of years, um, a lot of changes in the warehouse, um, uh, some some uh, new computer software systems that didn't go as planned when they were supposed to some new did. automation that um, we're working on. Um, you know, we have, we run two different um, DCs. We one run one run one in Madison and then another one in, in Phoenix. And so it's a pretty big operation. Um, and so, yeah, there's, there's always a lot of moving parts there, but. What do you look for in a new CEO? Well, thankfully I am not on the primary um, search committee because that is interesting thing for me is I've never had a job. I've never been interviewed by anybody. <laughs> I'm the only CEO that I've ever worked for. Gotcha. And, um, and so thank uh, goodness. that's, yeah. <laughs> so that's better left to people who actually, you know, run larger operations, been having this conversation with, um, a couple of my staff members and you know what our transition plan looks like. I mean, I've been doing this. I mean, it's my 29th anniversary um, at Duval Family Drugs this year. And Congrats. so looking at, you know, where things go. And I have people who are interested in, in you know, possibly coming in and taking over and, and, and you know, moving into um, some sort of, of ownership. I'm like, you, you need to figure out what you don't know. You can't rely on me to just tell you what you need to know, because I don't yeah. know what I don't know. Mm -hmm. I've, I've only done what I know for 30 years you need to research and see where pharmacy is going and what it's doing rather than, you know, counting on my limited. And, and I think that, you know, my view is pretty wide compared to most, you know, mm -hmm. independent owners, but I don't want the next person to be, you know, constrained by how narrow my view is. And so that's, I mean, that's really where we're working right now is trying to figure out, you know, how that works. And, um, cause I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the greatest manager. <laughs> We've been together 20 years this year. Wow. 20 year anniversary in October. So oh, wow. I think we should go on a cruise. Yeah, she's been pushing. I got my passport <laughs> specifically for this opportunity. So I'm ready to leave the country. I'm ready. But yeah. Can you, both, can you both be away at the same time? Can you, I guess y'all go to conferences together, so I guess you could both be away at the same time. Yeah, oh no, we, yeah, we do. Um, NCPA is going to be tricky because I'm bringing one of my pharmacists in charge too, and so um, we only have three pharmacists in, no, four pharmacists, three pharmacists, three. Four, four pharmacists in the organization. Two of us are going to be gone, leaving two to run the two stores, so. So, um, so oh, keep going. So yeah, yeah, figuring out how that all works and yeah, this cruise, yeah. Well, I have another employee who's been with us 32 years and I didn't take her on a cruise. Not with us. She started with my father 32 years ago. Doesn't count, I've anyway. been with you. 20 years <laughs> with you. And that's we a badge, right? outlasted husbands, birth children. We've done it all together. We know where the bodies are buried. And there are bodies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there seemed like a veiled threat there. I know where the bodies are. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, talking about the team, uh, uh, Serena, you, you said that you, you speak on um, talking about building team and things like that. Any tips for what's really worked with you guys um, in the pharmacy? Um, for us, it's definitely been a fly by the seat of your pants, which isn't always the best way to do it. When we decided to develop my role, which is the director of pharmacy operations, it was literally, we were at NCPA in 2019. Wow. We met Cody Clifton. Okay. Uh, randomly, which we thought was randomly. We okay, found it out wasn't, it wasn't quite as random. We designed. were targeted. You were targeted. <laughs> Yes, but, um, and Cody was, or I'm sorry, Carrie was introducing me and she was like, um, your title, she was like, is director of pharmacy operations. And that was basically how 
I got my promotion. <laughs> that was one minute and 30 seconds after I hired Cody Clifton, two minutes after I met him. Yes. And then... A busy few minutes. <laughs> we came back, but it was essentially because we had purchased a second store and needed a role at both stores of... Um, I don't know of importance, but just basically leadership roles in both stores, knowing that Carrie was going to be taken from the Duval store and really put into our Granite Falls location. Um, that that move, though, from technician into uh, m- more of a leadership role, it's really difficult um, to to get kind of, I mean, you've been working side by side with all of these people for 15 plus years. I mean, mm-hmm. granted, most of them hadn't been there that long, but to to make that kind of transition is really difficult. So um, Duval Family Drugs and Carrie and I decided that I would take some management courses through a local community college. So I did that online, which kind of helped develop some skills and some, Mm -hmm. you know, management skills, some negotiating skills, just a few things to get under my belt. Uh, As Carrie mentioned, she's an amazing business owner. Like, honestly, she's a great business owner, but management skills. (laughs) Kind of my way or the highway sort of mentality. Um, Yeah. You know, it's like Hulk smash. (laughs) <laughs> the problem is that's how you manage is the problem. <laughs> so back to the birds of a feather. Been, yes. 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 So there's been a lot of learning, um, a lot of just, you know, again, fly by the seat of your pants. I feel like though the, the management courses in the community college really helped. Mm-hmm. And then I think age has helped a lot. I mean, not that I wasn't already old when I got the position, but I think being in the company for 15 years and not being 20 coming into that position right. really helped. Yeah. Yep. Like I, like we said in the beginning, I had a tendency to be really spicy when I was young. So that's helped some. We've both mellowed with age. Yes. With yes. age comes wisdom. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then just my knowledge base has really been, mm-hmm. been something. So a lot of people come to me with questions already. I was already kind of in a leadership role, especially with like yeah. the computer system. Everybody right. comes to me with all of their questions. If they can't figure it out, they know that I can. Yep. And then I act as a liaison a lot of times mm-hmm. in between the staff and Carrie. So if anybody has problems or questions, because Carrie's just really not on location a lot, and obviously I have a direct line to Carrie. So anytime there's something that's going on, if it's not something that we can handle amongst ourselves, then I kind of act as that liaison in between the staff and Carrie too. So just gotcha. having a good relationship with Carrie's helped a lot. Yeah, and that's kind of that servant leader that you know she she promoted somebody who's helping everybody else, right? Who was who yeah. was te- who was their go to person already. We try yeah. to do that. We try to find people to promote who are already doing the job of serving a group, right? And just putting them above is kind of this is this is the person to serve you in a management capacity. It 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 does get tricky though. I mean, they're definitely you know among the technician roles, you know, it's, um, for some of the staff, it was hard for them to see another technician as their boss now. Um, and we weeded through a couple that, that just, it didn't, it didn't work for. One thing I can say for Serena, um, is that she's also a lifelong learner. She's one of those people who's always looking for information for something new. She's, you know, she's the podcast girl. You and I've already talked about how I feel about them (laughs) typically. Um, (laughs) My mind is, you you know, I turn on a podcast in the car and, you know, You're two thinking miles about down the road, else. my mind is already someplace else. Yep. I'm like, what did yeah. they just say? I have no yeah. idea. So I, mm-hmm. I just, I can't, I can't focus like that. I too enjoy, like she said, I enjoy learning. I always want more. And so I have a tendency to get involved in everything. So being involved in like CPESN has been wonderful and I'm on the, um, Council of Experts for PS3, the Pharmacy Services Support mm-hmm. Staff, which has been really great for helping develop develop my leadership role and really been a phenomenal way of helping support my staff and helping develop all of them, mm-hmm. you know, helping them develop out all, all of their roles and really helped switch my mindset too in not just referring to everybody as, 
you know, not pigeonholing people into just like you're you're a tech. You just need to be standing here filling prescriptions. But we have since I've been in this role, which it's been I feel like I mean, I believe it's been it's been since December. I think it was October that October. it, it was when October it, through March was the initial contract. Yeah. When it started, um, it has helped us change our workflow in the pharmacy immensely. Um, and so, you know, being able to be involved in all of those things has really helped develop out my leadership role too. So it's not so much that I look at myself as a manager as much as a leader and really just trying Mm -hmm. to help keep that leadership role involved and helping steer people in a certain direction. Hmm. No, I love that. Uh, we, we, uh, talked to, uh, Kurt and Andrew Hines, um, I love them Tuesday. Um, one of the things that that they seem to have done a good job is picking up new customers during the pandemic. So did y'all see the same? Did y'all pick up a lot of new customers? Uh, any strategies that you might have used to try to do that? One of the interesting things for us is we had a lot of new customers, but they come from out of town. So okay. our location is as both, both of our locations are relatively you guys saw coming to our location yes. out in Duval. It is, if you don't need to be in Duval, you are not coming to Duval. And you are never going to Granite Falls. So, so those, but you said those are trained. So a lot of the people who came to you came to you services. out of town to, they were out of town on, on vacation and came to you or they, they said, Oh, this is a place where they have a shot. And so I'm driving 20 minutes out of town to get my, get my shot. Yes. yes. Okay. Now, see, so up in Granite Falls, we had um, a little more uptake because uh, the chain stores up there were having more of a challenge keeping their stores open. So we did actually have um, a higher level of pickup. We had some local CVSs and Walgreens um, that really struggled staying staffed. Um, So we did have the pickup there. In Duval, we just don't have – there aren't enough – there aren't other – pharmacies around us that were struggling with those sorts of okay. things. Um, so we didn't, we had tons of co. I mean, we did so much COVID testing. I mean, we were doing upwards from 60 to a hundred COVID tests a day. So wow. Wow. we had an immense amount of people coming to us for COVID tests. So it's interesting. If you look at our numbers throughout the pandemic, we did not slow down. We never That's slowed good. down. If anything, we were busier during those mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. But again, all of those people were coming to us for services, not necessarily for prescriptions. Right. So it wasn't, it, it, it's been kind of an interesting, we got really good Google reviews. So our Google reviews went up, Nice. you mm-hmm. know, which is been a helpful and neat thing. And that's actually something that I'm looking into now is targeting, um, how to send out kind of a platform and getting people, more people to respond to Google reviews, you know, like if you enjoyed our services or if you, if we did good services, then Schaffner actually has a business card that he kind of gives out that has like QR codes to his different things. (laughs) So, you know, what about targeting the new patients that stopped in just for testing and vaccines? What about have you considered maybe moving to like a delivery service or shipping? Like, Hey, thanks for coming in. Do you know we can do your medications oh, as such? Like and minutes away. Yeah. yeah. And then it's just like you ship it to them or. So shipping is an issue with PBMs. Okay. Yeah. 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 It'd be more delivery. You, you just be, be expanding be your delivery, delivery radius. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and we are not currently doing delivery at either location. Oh, wow. Um, but it would be a way to retain those patients that stopped in just for yeah, testing and that'd be interesting. Yeah. Delivery is a is an interesting animal. We did it we did it for a while in the Duval location. Mm-hmm. Um the hard thing, there just is not enough margin in far, in prescriptions. Right, to pay for it. Um to justify free delivery. Um I know I know a ton of people who do it and mm-hmm. I'm not quite certain how they managed to do that. We've got some. You can listen to all my webinars. That's what our current domain is. And PS3 is all about deliveries. And (laughs) you're the expert on it. I facilitate the webinars. (laughs) Um, 
you know, we have some, I got good materials. We have some really atrocious, um, commercial contracts, um, you know, that, that the, um, the brand reimbursements are just horrendous. So bad. Um, if you ever fly, it's, it's one of them. Um, the, the Boeing contract is, is, Absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of my Granite Falls people. So I I don't. And in Granite Falls, we're at the base of a mountain. Um, And so it's 45 minutes to get to people's houses. It's insane. So so where do you expand? Where do you expand? Functional medicine? um, We've looked at some mm -hmm. functional medicine. Um, We in so during the pandemic, we've got counseling super lazy on our marketing. Um, so, um, we, you know, our next focus is to figure out what our, um, what our strategy is. We need to up our, um, socials game. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I do appreciate the RX local social stuff that you guys share out. That's super helpful. Um, so yeah, marketing is, is our next. And again, you know, did you guys have a chance to sit in on, uh, Phil's my father's class? I was just thinking class? that I think Serena would be amazing at that to do like a, a TikTok for, for the patients, a patient centered, some kind of deal. I, I think they would really, mm-hmm. I think that you would latch, you know, the, are you, are you familiar with Phil's my pharmacist? Yes. Yes. And okay. Serena is funny because she, she loves to talk, but she also hates to talk. I mean, when she's in her space, yeah. she's this. And when it's outside of her comfort zone, I'm just not well scripted. When I'm scripted, I'm a little. Scared. Yeah, and I don't, you know, and, and he tries to just, he would tell you it's best not to be scripted. Yeah. People yeah. don't mind seeing mistakes. People don't mind, you know, mm-hmm. it's just, uh, just, you know. Just be you. Just be you. Be, be and comfortable kind of, um, being you on social media. Yeah. You know, he, he yeah, said, you know, you could, you could crochet and have an audience on TikTok, you know, and, oh and, and yeah. you'll, the you'll find the people who, who will, and I, and I saw now uh, TikTok is releasing a new deal that's going to allow it to automatically post TikToks to your Facebook and stuff. Oh. Um, so, you know, just, you know, short 30, I think it's just 30 second, um, giving advice to, to patients on different type of stuff and, and just trying not to take yourself seriously. It might be fun to try. I, I, I think, you know, not everybody can do it. I don't think not everybody has the personality for it, you know, kind of a little quirky um, stuff, but um, I think that. Are you saying I'm quirky, Jeff? Did you just call me quirky? I think I did. You said I'd be good at it, and then I, you said quirky. I think, and, and, I, and I love quirky, quirky people, so. <laughs> His best friend is quirky. Yeah, that is, that is true. <laughs> that is very true. Um, are there more stores in the future? How long ago did you get the Granite Falls store? October 20, yeah, at the beginning of the pandemic. So is there more store? Was that was just too good to pass up or are we thinking more stores? Um, I mean, there's, there's some, there's possibilities. Um, we're kind of, there's not a lot of independence in our area. Okay. Um, so to pick up one that is, you know, that is looking to exit is, is kind of hard. Um, there's, you know, the, the Granite Falls store. So, I mean, the story behind the Granite Falls store is, um, it actually had been owned by my father, um, you know, 20 years ago. Um, and he sold it to his technician who then held it for 17 years and then she wanted to retire. So it came back to me. They're like, do you want it? I'm like, okay. (laughs) Um, and so, but there's, we're kind of Washington state for as large as it is, mm-hmm. we only have about 300 independent, less than 300 independents in the entire state. So, um, unless you're willing to start a store from scratch, it's, it's kind of hard to pick something up. We have a couple of aggregators in our area who, um, have picked up many, many stores, um, you know, portions of, and, um, he's really good at, you know, and he's taken a lot of really rural stores, you know, across, across the state. Um, and he's phenomenal at it and putting, you know, really good owners and, and, um, and managers in those positions. Um, 
but for me where I'm at to find one that is drivable. I mean, my two stores at this point are are still 45 minutes apart. There was another store that was, I believe, considering selling, but she kind of went a different route and ended up selling to the chain and then opening a gift store. And yeah, so Hmm. um, it's challenging. Yes, I would be open to it. Um, We'll we'll have to, you know, sit back and see how it all goes. Oh, sorry, coffee machine. (laughs) Yeah, it seems like a lot of our a lot of pharmacy, you know, that's the mode. The chains have quit buying as much. And mm-hmm. so, you know, we're really seeing a lot of the pioneer pharmacies buying more pioneer pharmacies, yep. um, pioneer owners tacking on new stuff and buying, you know, a lot of independent stores now staying independent. Um, well, and you also saw that, who was it that just laid off a bunch of people? Was it CVS or Walgreens? I don't know. Pro- I can't believe either one of them, but maybe. Walmart just dumped a bunch of management. Yeah, um, that's what it was. It was Walmart. It was. I knew yeah. it was one of the. Did you see that uh, two counties in Ohio um, won a judgment against Walmart, CVS, and Walgreens for like six hundred and fifty million dollars? Yep. Oh, the that's opioid just crazy. stuff. And it's it's um, kind of. I mean, it's it's scary too. I mean, you know we all dispensed the same drugs they did right you know mm-hmm. during that whole thing and so um it yeah something I mean, that doesn't scale you, you can't multiply 300 million dollars by every county in the united states that that, that money doesn't exist yeah mm-hmm. and, and you and you yeah. worry about you know is some little i ain't got nothing else to do lawyer going to go to you know duval county and say hey you know let's let's do this you know yeah, right. I, i'll do it for nothing and uh, right yeah no just, it's um you know, we, we, we hear those things and we're like, oh yeah, you know, get the big guys, but we were in the same game. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, it's extremely frightening. Um, at IPC, we, you know, we, we sold controls for many years. Um, and we finally said we have to, we have to get out because it just, there's, there's just too much risk out there. And, at IPC, we we run we ran an amazing um, you know controlled program. You know we had DEA agents who worked from us from the beginning. You know making sure that all of our compliance was mm-hmm. top notch. You know every store had a physical visit from um, you know our our controlled people before they were allowed to purchase. And you know so, but it was just like yeah, it's it's just the risk is just not worth it anymore. Yeah. So. Which is one thing that's so nice about Pioneer and all of our e-care plans, man. I feel like our CYA in Pioneer is so amazing. And yesterday I was just building a Narcan e-care plan with my SOP on how to build e-care plans that I pulled up yesterday and literally went through and did it step by step. Because if you don't do it every day, you forget how to do it. And Because I had an MTM tip report and it was to dispense a Narcan and I went into the patient's file and I saw that there was one on hold and I went to my pharmacist in charge and I was like, how come this is on hold? I don't see any documentation why the patient did not pick this up and the patient should have, I mean, according to their file and what Mm -hmm. had been dispensed and we didn't have any record why the patient refused it. And I was like, Hey, right there, that's a reason that we need an e-care plan. There should be documentation why this was refused. So sat down at my desk, built out an e-care plan. And we now have a Narcan e-care plan with documentation as to when an, a Narcan, because we dispense them, yep. you know, in Washington, we have a state standing order. You can always dispense a Narcan and we have a protocol. Anybody that, you know, meets it always gets one. And so now we have, and that's one thing that I love about Pioneer. So that brings up an, an interesting, and I like, I haven't looked at our documentation as far as what is into Pioneer and the help center and the help file, but that would be interesting. Like in care plans, like we teach how to build one, but do we have, do we give a recommendation list of what care plans to do? Well, some of those you how? build, but that's the, another thing we're going to try to do next year in connect is try to be a very mm-hmm. specific. So a care goal class being, Hey, let's build this type of care goal. Mm-hmm. in class and yeah. and then at the end of it you've built this type of care goal and you learned how to to build mm-hmm. a care goal so that that's good yeah well guys we we've are out of time hit our hour so it was um it was a pleasure always uh look forward to next time we get to see you and and learn in, in about CPA. you learn about your and hear about your uh well it won't be that but then maybe maybe the next yeah, time we'll see you after ncpa we'll hear about the cruise but yeah. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> There's no cruise. 
cruise between now and NCPA. <laughs> so by the Maybe time we'll do a Christmas cruise, just right. you and me. Yes. Yep. Just you and me. <laughs> all right. Um, thank you guys for all you do. Yes. Thank you so Both much. Both of you, uh, all in the community and all helping mm -hmm. pharmacy. And we, we really appreciate that. And, and, uh, thank you for giving us an hour this morning and joining us and, um, looking forward to the purple hair in October. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Say hi to Will. I, I will. <laughs> All and right, the tall guys. guys. Say hi to the tall guys for me, too. The I tall love guys. the tall guys. <laughs> we got you. Ben and Joel. We'll do. Right. Take yeah. care. Hey ladies. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, subscribe, and follow us wherever you get your podcast. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts to help us reach more pharmacy professionals like you.